Okay, it looks like the room is filling up. Let's start. Good evening and good morning, Unicorn fam. Welcome to the Unigachi Twitter Spaces. We're here at Multiversal Ventures, the team that will pave the way for us to finally reach out and get closer to our unicorns. Here's who we have for today. On the Crypto Unicorn side, we have Emerald Mist, that's Katrina, our product director. We have PA Fried Rice, that's Lois, our executive producer. We have me, Sparkly Unicorn, as our host. And we have on the Crypto Unicorns account, Ready Unicorn, acting as our tech. For Multiversal Ventures, we have Akshay Sharma and Kartik Thakura, partners and speakers for Multiversal Ventures. We have Amin Shigini, Roundyam on Twitter, lead designer and speaker for Multiversal Ventures. We also have the Multiver Multiversal Ventures account on the panel for visibility, but they won't be speaking. I'm so excited to be part of this Twitter space with all of these talented people. Both we are familiar with the Crypto Unicorns team at this point, so I would love for the Multiversal, Multiversal Ventures team to introduce yourselves one by one and tell us what you're working on connected to Unigachi. Let's start with Akshay. Hey everyone, thank you so much for having us and doing this uh, AMA as well on Twitter spaces. So this is Akshay. Uh, I'm a partner at Multiversal Ventures and really excited with what we're doing with Crypto Unicorns. So uh, my background is in computer science and AI and bringing that to uh, experiences such as NFTs and PFPs. We are looking to uh, bring the same experience with the gaming side of things with Crypto Unicorns. Really excited to meet you all. I'll pass it on to Karthik. Hi. Um, yeah, my name is Karthik. I'm also a partner at Multiversal Ventures. Similar to Akshay, I also have a background in uh, building games and experiences using AI and ML. Um, my traditional background has been in AI and ML for a long time. So it's been very exciting to come back to my roots. My first open source uh, project was actually in gaming uh, with SDO Pro, which is a long time ago. Uh, so now uh, it's uh, great to be back in the gaming uh, landscape, making amazing experiences. Uh, happy to be here. Glad to hear it. All right, let's have them in. I think a minute still joining. Let me make sure he's able to find the link. Oh, okay. All right. Let's have him later. Okay. Before we start with the questions, how about some opening remarks from Multiversal Ventures? Absolutely. So um, some opening remarks that I had uh, was, you know, it's been a real immense pleasure working with the CU fam. Uh, we're on Discord fairly regularly uh, in the third party uh, channel. If you haven't come and said hi, please do. Uh, we have a great time working with this community and we are looking forward to building new type of experiences around, uh, you know, not just Crypto Unicorns, but even uh, other um, experiences that we've talked about previously in our Discord AMA, um, specifically around building something called NFT Synthetics. If you're curious about what NFT Synthetics are and some of the things that we're building in the future, uh, please follow us. Uh, it's a multiversal tag and please show meet us on our Discord, uh, which we will send out links later on our um uh, Twitter. So very happy to be here. Uh, very excited to building together with an amazing community. Uh, so good morning and hello. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing more about Multiversal Ventures. I'll be asking a couple of questions for the MV team. After that, the floor is open to questions from the community. Okay, so I would love to know more about the partnership between Laguna Games and Multiversal Ventures. Uh, how did this come about? I think, go ahead. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, a while back, uh, Aaron from uh, Laguna Games, uh, myself and Akshay, uh, actually known each other from a previous life, a much more boring life. Uh, I'll have to say it that way. Uh, and we, did, we started talking about some of the type of, you know, things that we were building uh, in a company called Hammer of the Gods for AI. We were building a way to do distributed compute. And this was particularly exciting because notice that you know, a lot of the AI project in crypto were not uh, distributed in the sense that if you were using something like Altia AI for uh, NFTs, an amazing project allows you to create very personalized NFTs. Uh, but if their servers ever went down, you don't really have ownership. You can no, no longer use the actual agent of Altia. So we realized that there's really an opportunity here for us to create a brand new type of experience. And that's actually where the concept of multiversal came from. We figured there's a lot of different types of experiences 
edge AI or distributed compute can bring in uh, the crypto space because distributed and decentralized go very well hand in hand. And, uh, you know, uh, talking to Katrina, we started putting together how we can build Unigachi and, you know, the rest of the history as they say. That is amazing to hear. I would love to hear it from Katrina's point of view. So how does how did this partnership come about from LG's point of view? Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was definitely started with, you know, Aaron and the connection that he had there. But once I kind of jumped in, I was very excited about all of the, the AI stuff they're working on and the distributed compute kind of heard a lot of that and thought it was a really cool concept. And then once we started playing with some of the basic, show, they were showing me the basic kind of, you know, interact with your, um, potentially interacting with Unicorn or just having this sort of different kind of dynamic. I think it was very easy to imagine how kind of Unigachi could exist in that. Um, so yeah, also very excited to work with these guys. There's a lot of fun stuff. Um, and I think it's a really cool uh, combination of tech and uh, gaming coming together here. Yeah, super excited for it myself. How about you, Lois? Oh, I have been a big fan of our crypto unicorn, as well as just generally the 90s favorite game, Magachi. So mm -hmm. um, this is actually my second week uh, joining Laguna Games. This is something that I've been ramping up with the team. There's a lot of really great uh, prototype has been happening. I've been looking at our latest bell. So this is something we believe uh, it will be expanding quite a lot uh, down the road. So we're really excited to see how the AI training is happening and also how does that combine with a really, really large pool of our unit, uh, of corns and all the contents that is coming. Oh, definitely. I can agree with that. And I think another thing that makes this partnership special was that it was formed during the bear market. How do you feel about that, actually? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, th these are cycles, uh, bear and bull, uh, bull markets. We think that, you know, there's a common saying in crypto that says that in bear markets, you go build. Um, and I think that's what we're doing, right? So we are actually building something that's fantastic. So when the markets change, we are already ready and ready to launch. And we've actually launched, in my opinion, at that point. And there is a lot of momentum and the whole community is involved and in sharing the whole thing. So the point is that uh, we look at everything as long-term opportunities. And I think bull and bear markets are just signal and noise for certain small, um, small things. But bear markets are fantastic because we can focus and build the right thing that really what uh, adds value to the community, to everyone involved. Um, that's my thoughts. Uh, Karthik, I, I know you have a uh, lot more thoughts on this, so feel free to chime in as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I actually think that this is a massive opportunity. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, in a few other uh, community conversations that we've had, I think the bear market is actually a great place to build because there's less noise for projects that are not trying to build something that is providing sort of value or entertainment to a community. Uh, I, this is one of the reasons why I feel like, you know, Unigati is in a very special place because people really, really appreciate uh, the fact that we're building it together with the community. And these are the type of projects that tend to get lost in the noise in a very frothy bull market, which is what we had late 2021. So I see this as a massive opportunity to actually put something out that, you know, we're very proud of, that the community is proud of being part of and putting together something that, you know, makes all of us feel more connected to the game. So very excited. I am hyped for it as well. So I definitely agree with you there that the bear market is the perfect time to just keep our heads down and keep on building and keep in touch with the community. I really appreciate how um, MV has taken it upon themselves to be very active in the Discord server and reach out to everyone in the community. What are your thoughts on this partnership in the context of the bear market, Katrina? I mean, there isn't much more to add from what Akshay and Kartik said. You know, it's it, it's a great opportunity. I agree with both of them. You know, a bear market is time to kind of put your heads down and build stuff. And, you know, I, I come from games, which games are always fun. People always want to play um, fun experiences. So I think that, you know, that's it's more of an evergreen uh, um, choice. And then combined with some really cool tech that I think is massively exciting to me personally, I I think we can't go wrong. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun and I can't wait for everyone to kind of see what we've been doing behind the scenes. And I mean, more than what we've shown. So um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's definitely a massive opportunity. Like everyone has said. I agree with that as well. Lois, can you share your thoughts? Um, 
there's only maybe one small thing that I would really add. I think, you know, um, with a very, very short time joining the team so far, one of the things that we're really trying to do um, that is a little bit different from some other OG game developer is we're listening to our community and we're really trying to understand what everyone's needs. Uh, with this market, I think uh, it really helped us to uh, include more diverse voices, different type of player, different kind of genre that they're interested in. Uh, we really wanted to collect everyone's feedback and understanding what will be a really great experience uh, for all. Um, so I think this is an opportunity that there will be more uh, more chances to hear different and more diverse community voices in this uh, in this period of time. Yeah, definitely. If there's something that Crypto Unicorns promotes, I feel like you're really big on community and hearing everybody's voices. I'd like to focus a couple more questions on Multiversal Adventures. Can you tell us more about how Unigachi came to be? Like, what's the story behind it? I guess I can jump in. Um, I was trying to remember the like the actual moment that sort of it appeared. I think it was such a natural fit in some ways with when we were when I, I remember seeing a little demo video of kind of the the computer vision stuff that those guys were working on and a little unicorn reacting to you know some basic uh, actions on the screen. And I think it was just very easy for all of us to say, "Oh, you're going to interact with your unicorn. A unicorn it needs to have." you know, you want to check in on it daily and take care of it and feed it. And you can quickly just get to where sort of this basic Tamagotchi and then having, I mean, I had a Tamagotchi when I was a kid and I think other people in this group also did. And so it was sort of a natural evolution of this very basic kind of interactive, interactive moment with a unicorn. Um, and then I remember Aaron coming to me and being like, can we name it Unigachi? And it was just sort of like, oh yeah, that does seem kind of obvious that that would be the combination here because we are straight up building sort of a Tamagotchi inspired unicorn interactive experience. Um, so that's that's what I remember. I don't know if uh, anyone else has some extra story to tell from there. Yeah, for me, it was, um, I actually, that demo that Katrina is talking about, I actually was just kind of Googling around on um, the Unity Asset Store and I was just like, ooh, this is a cool little fun little unicorn here. And I bought it for like eight bucks. And I was just like, oh, it has some animation. And at that time, we were working on computer vision on the mobile phone and on uh, mobile web and um, using something called WebAssembly. So I was just like, oh, why don't we just put these two together? And that was actually the first demo. <laughs> and then I realized that Aaron, you know, um, Aaron was working on Crypto Unicorn, so I showed it to him. And then, then you know, it just took off from there. It's just like every time we play with all, all of our dev builds, uh, I know this is true for Akshay too. Uh, Akshay is more on the economic side, so sometimes he will wander off into the weeds or come by, come by one in a, once in a while, and then he'll see it on the phone, and he's like a little kid again, and he's older than us. So it's kind of funny watching him think, ooh, you can do this now. So it, it just, it's just such a joy to make. And I think that's the type of products that you know people want to make and come behind is like when it's fun to make, you know, it's going to be fun to play with. Uh, just because you can't help but keep loading the, you know, dev environment over and over again just to play with it. So it's, um, yeah, that, that's actually where the demo came from. It was just pure fun. And and I think that just, you know, that just the ethos of the Crypto Unicorn family. It's uh, pure fun. <laughs> so I think it well, uh, worked well. And I can second that. Uh, I can second many of the things that said we are older. But I still get addicted to games. And I think it's it's like, I think Katrina said, it's an evergreen thing. And I think we have started focusing on making everything more fun. And, and when you start with that, I think it's um, obviously that includes diversity because I think everyone wants to have fun. It doesn't matter about age or uh, where you live or what you do. It's, it's so riveting to see that uh, these are the type of ideas that brings so many people. And in fact, one of the goals that we have is to bring the next billion people. And I think gaming is probably the, the best way we can do that. And so we're praying for that. Yeah, my friend as well. I'm so happy that this all, like it just comes together naturally because of the experiences that we have. And I'm sure that you have some sort of a personal recollection of gaming memory related to Tamagotchi. Can you tell us more about that? Um, like, I'm sure. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. 
Yeah, I, I, I had a Tamagotchi as a, as a kid and I remember it died a bunch and I like couldn't figure out how to play it at first. <laughs> and I had to like ask all my friends and they're like, wait, how does this work? Or, and I think it was just, they, they sometimes also just die. And that's like, it's not your fault. It's just, they, they die. So um, I just, I have that memory of just being so confused and sad every time my Tamagotchi died. Um, but also very much enjoying it and had a, like a cute one, you know, classic attached to your backpack or whatever it was. And, and even for this project, I, I went and bought a Tamagotchi again to like remind myself uh, of it. And it was, there, it's so simple, but so entertaining at the same time. So um, and that's, that's what I remember of it. Yeah. I, I have a different uh, um, relationship with Tamagotchi. Uh, so I had moved from um, India to the Middle East to Canada and I was fairly young and I moved to a town or actually a school where pretty much everyone had gone through kindergarten to grade six uh, together. Like they all knew each other. They all knew each other's parents. And I was like the odd guy out in my class. I just moved in. I didn't know anyone. So it was kind of uh, difficult making friends at first. And I remember like, you know, I used to play a lot of when we were back in the Middle East, which was Atari. And uh, we didn't bring the console over just because there was like the electrical plugs are different. So I didn't have a gaming console when I first moved. So I was just like bored out of my mind and no one to talk to. So my dad got me a little Tamagotchi and that was what I used to play with on the bus. And that's how I made my first friends uh, when I came to, uh, when I, when someone else noticed that I also had a Tamagotchi and we just started talking about our pets and like, you know, when, what we do with it, et cetera. And so excited. And that was, you know, uh, when I really learned the power of games and helping people connect and um, and then like that's where I get that like you know nostalgia feeling with Tamagotchi. It was my first real console to say in in Canada. So uh, that's my history with Tamagotchi. That's why I'm so excited about building this. How about you, Akshay? Can you tell us more about your experiences? Yeah, um, well, I don't personally have uh, much experience with Tamagotchi, but I was a kid that grew up like playing Mario games on like old consoles. Uh, I came from India, so we did not have much access to computers back then. Um, so basically, it was just gaming, uh, gaming on these um, uh, Nintendo devices that you would connect to your com uh, sort of TV and start playing with it. Uh, but when I got the first computer, and this was back in late 90s, um, you know, I got addicted to most of the sort of, you know, 8-bit games that were that were probably entered back in the day. So that's really been my background uh, of what I was doing with gaming. Um, but it's 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 when I moved to the U.S., um, that's really when, you know, we had high bandwidth to play, like, some Call of Duty kind of games. But over time, I've phased out playing those kind of games into more fun games. Like, my the game that I play recently is Stray, which is uh, your cat trying to, like, survive sort of a game. And, and again, it comes back to the same concept, which is that, you you are sort of a character in the game and you, you immerse yourself in the game for a while during that you know when you play the game and it lasts for me personally about like for a few weeks that's my attention span to play but when i'm doing that for a few weeks i'm totally the character that i am in right so um my lifestyle somewhat evolves around that that's uh, it's funny people around me actually notice that uh, i talk a lot about what happens in the game and i kind of relate that to real world experiences for me. So when I when I look at crypto unicorns, it's like I bought I bought my Winded Muffin as well and I'm hoping to buy more, but it's just so hard to get more of those unicorns. And I, I see like, you know, the community is owning a lot, which is fantastic. But the, the point is that, you know, it's it's a game that that has infinite opportunities to do certain things. Um, the difference that I see between uh, a game that, you know, that I play on the PC versus something like say the blockchain game is that there is there is this idea that there is some economic incentive to continue playing that, right? And that's something that's close to me because what brings people back is not just the fun and experiences, but also the fact there's an opportunity to build other types of things or derivative value out of that. So that's really where um, I'm focused on and I'm really like excited to see how to take that forward um, as part of Multiversal Ventures. Exciting. How about you, Lois? Do you have any early experiences with Tamagotchi? Um, I did own a Tamagotchi when I was a really young kid, but I would really wanted to kind of talk about like why we bring back some, you know, like for us as developers um, and trying to bring a little game kind of back. Um, I think I have a very vivid memory of one of this uh, AMA um, a while back in our community. Um, 
one of our player, um, he's a father, and then he talks about that how he is uh, showing the unicorn and then doing some of the the daily routine uh, with his daughter, and this really speaks a lot of um, our vision of bringing some of the the game back and also really helping using the game to um, connecting with people. Um, I think there is no boundaries of any games that we're uh, designing or building at the moment. Uh, I think unicorn uh our crypto unicorn probably have one of the best opportunity to really reach a very different uh, range of uh community and for this kind of more contained um and not necessarily in a very complex deep uh sort of preparation or sort of resource planning type of game i think this will really help us to reach different type of um, audience and my personal hope one day that um you know with the same uh unicorn IP that we can have, you know, the parents playing it, the kids also feel being involved. Um, this is a really great start for us. And I think at the very least, my memory of uh, Tamagotchi or any of the ritual game, uh, it's really something that we can come back over and over. Um, and then also having this experience to connect with the next generation or, you know, friends that from different country or, you know, we have a very different uh, growing up background. So. This is something I think is really big, and I think it will be really meaningful. Uh, game can be fun, uh, but I think ultimately it's really helping us to connect with one another. Yeah, I definitely agree with that connection, because I feel like there's something in here for everybody, either pa parents, kids, whatever you, wherever you are on the age spectrum. And I feel like something that makes it a lot sweeter is this, the nostalgia factor for people who had Tamagotchis when they were young. Will we be seeing uh, nostalgia cases from Tamagotchi being implemented in Unigachi, or will it differ somehow? Uh, so Unigachi is, you know, has inspiration in Tamagotchi, but it is a very different experience. Uh, and that's fundamentally because we started from a concept of making something digital more alive. Uh, and we're doing that with the computer vision aspect of it. Um, and the, uh, you know, we also want it to be a new type of experience that has never been seen before. So it's more like a nostalgia light, I would, uh, but it's more focused on the fact that it's providing um, a new way to interact with your digital assets. Uh, I also wanted to bring it a little back to, you know, what Lois was saying about th these being general, uh, generationally, um, um, what do you call it? And, uh, and I think that's really important because the same sort of concept, like the fundamental themes, uh, like the hero's arc, Stuff that we love across all of uh, media is uh, repackaged into new sort of um, experiences fairly regularly. And it works very well because these are like, you know, uh, speak to the human condition. Wanting to take care of something and watching it grow and watching it do things are stuff that all of us hope. Like, this is why a lot of farming games, people play, play a lot of farming games. It's in fact why I, I, I want to play Crypto Unicorn because I love the aspect of, you know, growing something, taking care of it, tending to it. And I think that sort of concept is not necessarily just Tamagotchi. I think it's in a lot of games. And we want to build on top of that um, uh, emotional engagement and put together an experience that's new and novel. And this is where we're br bringing computer vision in. There's very few games that use computer vision because it's very tricky to get that interaction design correct. Like when you say, hello, what if the unicorn is doing something else? Or what if uh, the computer vision model recognized you saying hello like a billion times in a second? How do you account for that in the animation? So that is the challenge, uh, which is the reason why a lot of games don't actually have real-time input, right? They have, uh, unless if you're uh, playing FPS, real-time input for something like this, I mean. So this is why uh, the, you haven't seen a lot of games like that, and that's the challenge that we are going after. And I think that's part of what makes this very different than what you would have seen anywhere else. So we are Tamagotchi-like, in the spirit of it, but we're actually a very different game. Once it does come out, you'll see what we're talking about. Um, Amin can also speak a little bit. It looks like Amin finally joined uh, uh, in terms of the experience design that we're going after. Hey guys, uh, nice to be nice to be here. I'm Amin, uh, working on experience and UI development for the past fifteen years. And yeah, let's talk about a little bit. Let's talk about a little about the. Tomogachi experience, actually. So um, with this design, since this is a game development and game design, 
we like to envision a clear and consistent uh, customer experience strategy. So we go with uh, imagining this Tamagotchi box, uh, which users can interact with using our machine learning methods. Basically, you are going to be uh, sat beside your camera and by doing certain things like uh, bringing your hands up as a hello or showing a love song using your hands, uh, that unicorn going to interact with you. Also, this is our uh, overall strategy. Also, we are going to have some, uh, create some experience by you feeding uh, and playing with the unicorn. On the, in this, uh, so we are going to do that because we want to create a bond uh, experience-wise between a user and a unicorn that he bought. Uh, this is about the experience. And on the UI side, we were uh, keeping the corporate identity of the uh, crypto unicorns since our users already bought into that and liking that uh, user interfaces. So the whole user interface are based on what we already have, uh, what, what, uh, what we already had actually. Uh, that's about it. So uh, putting user first and have a clear and consistent uh, strategy toward the game design is uh, there are uh, main points on designing the game and how we actually convey the experience. Kartik, you want to add something? No, I think you. I think you covered that very well. Yeah. Thank you so much. Something that I also want to expand on is, um, in your intro, you mentioned synthetics for Unigachi, and I feel like this is connected to how you said you want to break barriers for NFT holders by improving the value of their digital assets. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that entails? Absolutely. Yeah, so NFT synthetics come from, the word for synthetics come from a financial word, uh, which means derivatives. Uh, in our vision of the future, where more, the next 1 billion users to crypto are going to be actually NFT holders, or they're going to come through the gateway of NFT, we wanted to envision what are ways that communities can actually, you know, um, uh, a way that communities can interact with the value of their NFTs. And what I mean by that is like, let's say you buy a car or you buy a house, uh, you know, you can refurbish the kitchen. This, this should re, uh, you know, reevaluate the value of your house. Uh, it should increase the value of your house. Uh, okay. So in the same sort of concept, you really can't do that with NFTs today, right? Um, uh, so that's one of the reasons why we build different classes of NFTs. And one of those is a community NFT synthetic. Uh, and that experience is, you know, everyone collecting uh, data so they can train their NFTs. Um, and that's, that's one of the project that we just launched, uh, which is ongoing right now uh, with Crypto Unicorns Fan. Um, and we've, we've gotten at this point more than 4,500 images from people wanting to teach unicorns in a uh, little unicorn university. And the unicorns are learning very well, uh, which I shared some numbers before. And that's a community NFT synthetic. So now what uh, people who uh, want to play with the Unigachi experience would have to get uh, an NFT uh, crypto unicorn, which addresses the increases the value of that overall collection. So because uh, the community contributed to creating new data assets, for these NFTs, it actually increased the overall value of the whole collection. And that we feel is an NFT synthetic, the data collection application. Other type of application is obviously the interactive interactivity that we're building into uh, Unigachi. There are a couple other projects that we're looking at. One of them is around um, the PFPs, where you can pose your PFPs and you can use that as your own meme. So create meme from your own NFTs. Uh, that's something that we're working uh, in the future. And there's a blog post that we wrote about, about all of these different types of NFT synthetics. Uh, another NFT synthetics that we're very excited with are uh, something called uh, Portal, uh, where there's an entire 3D experience around the NFTs where people can come in kind of like a multiplayer game. Each one of these are very challenging, but the underlying concept around all of these NFT synthetics is that participation begets new value. And it's true in all real world assets and we feel it should be real, uh, it should be the same sort of uh, concept with uh, NFT assets. So it's like an additional way for the community to add even more value to the NFTs that they hold. Interesting. Absolutely. Oh, that's really in line with our community-centric kind of approach. 
Can you share with us a little more about Yonagachi? Do you have any alpha for the people who are listening in? Uh, we don't need, uh, we're being very careful about the type of information we're putting out. Uh, uh, we're being very in sync with the uh, Laguna Games team, uh, just because we want to make sure everything is solid and uh, make certain expectations that we believe the community uh, holds. Uh, so at this point, no alpha yet, but uh, I am still very excited about the crypto unicorns is what I will say, and I'm trying to buy some of them is all I will say. <laughs> oh, well. Unicorn fam, I tried for you with no alpha for today. <laughs> Let's stay in. Let's keep on listening to them to see if there can be more alpha in the future. I'm really interested in learning more about the design, though. What kind of uh, thought process do you have for the experiences with Unigachi? What do you think defines great experiences? I mean, Mm, that's a good question. So on this particular design, since it is a game design, I think being adventurous at some point. So if we can find some ways with, so users interact with their unicorns on a daily basis and eager to do so. So they, are, they have this habit of going to their unicorns every day, feed them, play with them, and interact with them in different ways. I think... In that point, we are succeeding designing, designing the game. So that's somehow a uh, our north light for game design. But regarding the experience itself, I believe uh, being you know clear enough on design, so users do not get confused when they are step into our game, is one of the most important metrics. And uh, down the road, we should remove any friction on these areas. So we should keep an eye on the community and get feedbacks, uh, continuous feedbacks uh, from the com community and see where are the pain points, uh, where users get unclear and unsure about what should they are doing or something like that, or on places that they are unsure about how to interact with the unicorn. Uh, putting all of this together, I think, uh, these are our guidelines, and uh, this is actually my opinion about a good experience on game designs. Yeah. Yeah, Thank you. So can you, <laughs> can you come in more and tell us about the systems that were used to create the concepts of Funagachi? In terms of uh, design systems, we already have lots of established design systems and UI taste, to be say, and UI taste uh, from the uh, Crypto Unicorn team. So they put lots of time into creating all of those. So we actually reuse these design systems and put them to work on web and mobile and create a custom-made design system for a game on mobile and on browser. So uh, currently, we have our uh, tailor-made design system, which drive from uh, the UI assets that we already had uh, from Crypto Unicorns. Uh, yeah. Simply put, it is a tailor-made design system. That's good to hear. So from the previous question about great experiences, I feel like uh, what you said, uh, can be encapsulated in that saying where game design should always put players first. What about Yonagachi? Can you share that really embodies this kind of statement? Yeah, I think it is. So, um, you know, for, for what it's worth, uh, the unicorns themselves are mystical, extraordinary creatures, and we let the users to somehow control them to this Yonagachi box to feed them, uh, to play with them, and to interact with them. So somehow, our users have the main control over their uh, unicorns. Uh, we are putting our users first to the base um, concept of the game. And also, we try to um, create all of those simple experiences uh, to bring joys. Uh, to you uh, for users. So uh, our unicorn going to be cheerful, playful, and have all kind of you know sweet animations. Uh, so yeah, 
I think we are, we are actually, that's one of the things that are doing uh, our best job in uh, putting user first and create some joyful experience for users. And a joyful experience. So there's been a lot of feedback from the community about this project and they're super excited for it, especially for parents, for people who are, for people who have experienced Unagachi before in their childhood. There's a lot of excitement there. I feel like it's really the nostalgia factor. And speaking of nostalgia, there's a nostalgia sort of like resurgence, I feel like. So I heard recently that, who was that? The creator of The Sims, uh, well, right, yeah, yeah, he's getting into blockchain gaming right now. So I feel like it's it's really, it's really making a comeback, especially in Web three. Do you have any other exciting projects that you guys would like to share, MV? Absolutely. Uh, some of the exciting projects that we have uh, coming is also uh, a concept of simulation, uh, uh, similar to uh, but um, uh, something we're calling Guji. Uh, which is going to be coming out after we are closed off with the, uh, where you got you in a place where we feel that, you know, we can take on another project of that complexity. Uh, so Guji is going to be a very um, exciting type of NFT uh, for you to own where you can actually, uh, where Guji itself has its own life. Uh, so you're not actually controlling it. Uh, Guji will go and buy things on the blockchain uh, for you uh, based on uh, characteristic traits that it has. Uh, it will have a house and it will actually just try to live its own life. Uh, that's a type of concept that we're trying to play with uh, to see if we can create synthetic economies around the NFT. So things that the NFT needs and wants are what it buys and uh, you get to see uh, what kind of life it has. You can, of course, gift something to the Guji, but uh, the Guji has its own life. Uh, and that's something that we're trying to play with where um, we've heard a lot about synthetic life and you know digital life. Uh, but they always seem somewhat contrived because they need input from you. But wouldn't it be exciting? You open up, you know, your computer and you go and see what your Guji is up to. And, oh, it's taking classes in a university. And it's learning how to do a new type of skill to make, you know, a new type of product that other Guji can do. That's something that we're trying to play with. We haven't, we're just doing the game design of it now. We haven't really actually put anything together. But it's more of an experiment to see how far we can go with the concept of NFT synthetic. Uh, another project that we're working on is called Raccoon Wars, and it's around the NFT synthetic idea of portals, where instead of buying a different character for NFT, you're actually buying a different world that the NFT lives in. Uh, so it's the same sort of character, but in different worlds, and uh, I let your imagination kind of go wild with that. Uh, but all of these are little experiments that we're using to showcase to, you know, um, uh, larger projects like Triple Unicorns and other uh, folks that we're talking to in the NFT space of the type of new type of, you know, um, experience that you can bring to your community. So these are some experiments that we're going to put out. Uh, so we're not going to put out a lot of these NFTs because they are fairly compelled. Um, so keep an eye out on our Twitter uh, and, and we'll have to sneak peek. But today our 100% focus is on getting you know, to out. All right. I'm starting to notice sort of like a trend of all the projects that you were talking about. It's sort of like it marries advanced AI, machine learning, the core features of blockchain technology. Can you tell us more about that? Absolutely. So our um, methodology to merging AI and gaming is um, very hyper-focused on interactivity. And then the interaction between the AI and the gaming uh, concept are very smooth. Um, so for example, if you use any other chatbot type uh, NFT today, uh, it's very, you know, uh, transactional. You say a word, it'll say something back. You'll say a sentence, it'll say something back. Uh, and which is great. You know, we've built chatbots in the past too. But it doesn't feel like you're really talking to someone real. It doesn't feel like you're interacting with someone real. That chatbot will never interrupt you mid-typing and say something different. Um, so we wanted to build a type of experience uh, that really brings, breeds lives to these things. The other principle that we hold very dearly is that any model trained for these NFTs, when you buy that NFT, it's owned by you. So what I mean by that is if, you know, a centralized AI server went down that was running something like Althea NFT uh, AI, um, you're not able to actually get the full experience for your NFT. So we're working very, very hard on making these models very tiny so they work on any phone out there. Um, uh, this does actually have a trade-off to how complex these ideas can be. Uh, but for example, if you're looking at a project like Guji 
uh, you can trade off that complexity uh, with doing um, a type of uh, machine intelligence called automata. Uh, if you if you would have played Conway's Game of Life, it's the same sort of uh, idea. Small interactions that work well together create very dynamic worlds. Um, and and this is something that uh, you know the way to make procedural um, interactions or procedural worlds. Um, and in, uh, and I've worked well in web view games. So we're trying to explore this concept of how we can supercharge that with AI, but AI that's not owned by any central entity. It's decentralized and distributed. Uh, and so we really believe in those sort of concepts when we think about the type of projects that we're taking on. All right. Well, for me, I'm super excited about Unigachi, and I'm sure that so much of the community is, is excited for it as well. It's definitely a brand new way to interact with the community, and the fact that it adds value to the NFTs in a community-driven kind of way is just kind of I, icing on the cake for me. It's really in the interactions for me. It's, it just feels like a very personal connection to your NFT. Absolutely. So those are all of the questions that I wanted to ask community. If you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand so we go up and have you be a speaker. We would love to hear any questions that you have about Inagachi. It's It feels like a completely new concept and I just want to learn more about it. In the meantime, I will be reading out questions from people in the community in the Discord server, Crypto Unicorns. Hmm, we have a question here. Let's see. So for Unigachi, can you tell us more about like how it'll start out? Do we need to sync a certain amount of, uh, let's say, Unim or RBW? Um, is it going to be, like, do we need to pay for this in terms of like tokens? Yeah, so as it stands right now, the way it's designed, the first version, you won't need to pay anything to play with uh, interacting with the unicorn. Uh, I do believe we have something on the roadmap at some point where you may sync your interactions back to the blockchain, but we haven't completely flushed that out yet. Um, I know, Katrina, you had some thoughts around that long term, uh, but the first release, we are not going to require you to uh, you know, use any unim or RBW to interact with the unicorn. Yeah, we're kind of thinking about all the different ways that we want everyone in the community to kind of move both their experience and around from all these different um, games. And so, yes, we are planning on, you know, some idea of things that you could, you know, interact with or do um, with, you know, potential token tokenized systems. So it's all still very much design phase, kind of building it out as, as we get kind of this core gameplay to be really fun, to have build emotional connections with your unicorn and then sort of, as we're developing that and figuring out that that portion, we're sort of building our plan um, longer term for all of both Unigachi and kind of all of the games in the Crypto Unicorns universe. So not too many specifics because it's it's all in progress and I don't kind of want to spoil anything too much. <laughs> That's understandable. So for right now, Unigachi is just for playing. That's the MVP. So... I guess the mindset here is that we ship first, first and foremost, we get the MVP out and then we see how the community interacts with it so we can be flexible and see how they'd like to shape your experience. So that question was from Noob Master, <laughs> Noob Master 69. <laughs> Thanks so much for that question. Okay, we have another concern here from B. So they're a big concern about battery drain. Oh, I guess this ties in also to what kind of devices do you think we'll be able to play Unigachi on? Is this going to be a mobile kind of thing or for PC? Yeah, so we are aiming for this to be a responsive web game. So it's going to be a progressive web app, which means that you can add it to your home screen using Safari on iPhone and on Android, the same sort of concept. Um, we uh, also obviously have working on the desktop. Uh, and it's interesting that the question about battery drain comes into play. Uh, so one of the trade-offs with having a distributed computing um, concept is that everything is running on your phone. Uh, and, and, and the advantages of that we think really outweighs the con uh, is that you uh, can always play with your unit. You don't need to have anything from a central server, aside from the fact that you're um, you know, registering, uh, opening it up with your wallet. Um, so that definitely is something that we 
uh, really believe in that the AI won't go down mid play. Uh, but that obviously does have somewhat of a higher battery drain. But we're working on uh, working very hard on optimizing our model so that we're able to get a good experience. But if you can imagine having both the camera, the model running, and the 3D asset moving around, there is going to be a bit of a, a battery and a compute requirement from the phones that will have that support. Uh, we will put out a support grid uh, once we're done with our beta. This, we'll test it on as many different phones as possible. Um, but I expect some of the mid-tier and up phones will work well, and the desktop app should work. Uh, obviously, on the desktop, it will be working very well. So this will be all web, open web concepts. <laughs> it's super exciting to hear. Okay, so for desktop, we do have a couple of people who are kind of shy about their about using their cameras, especially for you know internet related purposes. Mm -hmm. So aside from um, uh, aside from the unicorns being able to see how their owner interacts with them on camera, is there a different way of uh, maybe interacting with unicorns? Yeah, I mean, this is a great question. Uh, at this point, it is purely a computer vision based interaction. Um, and one of the things to notice, because the model is actually running on your phone, we don't send the images anywhere. So the images actually don't leave your phone ever. That's one of the biggest advantages of having a distributed compute. And we can make that where, very obvious in our info uh, that we put out with the game. Uh, but that's a valid concern, and that's exactly why we do distributed AI rather than having your uh, information go back to a central server where it can be collected. It's all done on your phone. Um, so that's how we maintain privacy. So in fact, once you load your NFT, you can turn off the Wi-Fi if you want and play with your, play with your NFT, uh, play with your unicorn. Um, that being said, uh, we hadn't really thought about interactions without the, um, without the um, uh, camera. Uh, that being said, uh, but... Uh, still, uh, there are certain things that you can do without doing the computer vision aspect of it, which is, you know, feed it or play with the unicorn. Uh, however, some, some types of interactions like wake up and put it to sleep will still need the computer vision thing. But uh, maybe that's uh, something that Katrina had thoughts on in terms of uh, the game design aspect. Yeah, I'm, I, I do want to make sure we have a, an experience that can be fun for people who do feel uncomfortable on camera. I mean, there's definitely stuff we've talked about, you know, the feeding and various actions that you can do that don't require a camera. And then we've kind of com had conversations a little bit. I, I think Amin and I talked about, you know, do we have buttons for um, for anything that's on the camera that we don't want people to have to have. But I think that's something we can also see how people play with it and, you know, start getting feedback of is that how important is that? What would be a fun alternate? Um, we have a, a bunch of ideas, but I think um, once we get it into the hands of people, it'll be easier to to understand what exactly the the alternates that would be desired or kind of how people want to interact with the camera, how, you know, just getting a little bit more information on that. Um, so that's, that's our thoughts. All right. Well, I'm sure this will be amazing for people who are a bit more uh, concerned about their privacy. And you mentioned that you can play Unigachi even without an internet connection. Is that right? Yeah, but the first version, uh, as long as you're not thinking, uh, once we do have concept like thinking back to the block thing, we will. But um, uh, at this point, yeah, once you load your 3D NFTs, uh, you should be able to play Unigachi without Wi-Fi. So you can use that as a way to guarantee that you are comfortable with your images not going anywhere. Wow, that that's amazing. Like, it's something that you can play even without an internet connection. That definitely, like, broadens like when and where you can play with your Yunagachi. So I'm sure people can look forward to that. Okay. <laughs> we have a funny question from Kaiser Mac. Okay, this will be our last question, by the way. So if you have any other questions that you want to ask, please raise your hand or request to be a speaker so we can try to fit your question in. But for now, since we don't have anybody requesting, this will be a last question. <laughs> will my unicorn die if I forget to feed them? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> No, we are absolutely not in the favor of killing unicorns. We love them very much, but they will be very sad if you don't feed them. Let's put it that way. Oh, definitely. I'm sad without food even for like, I don't know, a couple hours. I can't imagine how it'll be for unicorns. <laughs> but there we go. Unicorn fam, if you end up sleeping for way too long and forget to feed your unicorn, nothing bad will happen to them. Well, they'll be sad, which is a bad thing, but nothing uh, a very bad thing. Bad. <laughs> you <to> bed. 
Okay, so that's it. That's the questions that we have for the Unigashi Twitter spaces. Thank you so much to everybody for participating. We'll see you in the middle of the week on our Discord server for our weekly town hall number 15. Don't miss it. We'll post a recording of this event on our socials if you would like to give it a re-listen. Don't forget to share this with your friends and fellow Unicorn fam who couldn't make it. If you have more burning questions, feel free to reach out on the Unigachi sub channel under the second party partners category on Discord. Join the Crypto Unicorns Discord server on discord.gg slash crypto unicorns. This has been Sparkly Unicorn with your host Vay Unicorn. Before we end this Twitter spaces, would you like to add anything else? Uh, yeah, um, please follow us on our uh, Twitter and please follow us on Discord. We're going to be sending out project updates and also be sharing some sneak peeks. Uh, so uh, please follow us also on the channel in uh, Laguna Game channel. I'm uh, sorry, Crypto Unicorn channel, uh, Discord. And uh, um, uh, come say hello. Thank you very much. All right, amazing. How about Katrina and Lois? Do you have anything to add? Just uh, thanks for hosting and getting all the questions here. It was great to talk about this project and definitely join Discord. Check out the the, the tools and the information they're sharing and uh, follow along. Just like Katrina said. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you so much again for making the time to be part of this Unigachi AMA on Twitter Spaces. I appreciate everybody so much. So that is morning. Good night and see you in game, Unicorn fam. If you have more questions, please remember to reach out on that second party partners category on Discord. There's a Unigachi support channel just for this. All right, that's it for the Twitter Spaces. See you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.
this category on Discord. There's a Unigashi support channel just for this. All right, that's it for the Twitter spaces. See you guys next week.